all this is varun varunti welcome to Aer aerospace structures today we are going to discuss about the aircraft components and structures okay let's go into the definition of a frame the basic structure of an aircraft aircraft designed to withstand aerodynamic forces and stress imposed uh, when you take an a frame or airplane the major role of an aircraft airplane is to resist the stress as well as it encounters an aerodynamic loads like a lift drag and etc and moreover it should also resist the stress imposed and this stress imposed might be of several causes it might be a inertial load or some other causes coming to the classification of aircraft we have two type of aircrafts one is a a uh, rotary rotary wing structure and one is fixed wing structure here in the fixed wing structure the wing of an aircraft is the main source of lift and in rotary type of uh, aircraft the rotor is the main source of the lift this is the reason why we have classified into the two categories one is the rotary type and another is that uh, fixed wing type and next the airplane is controllable around its lateral longitudinal and vertical axis by deflection of flight control for example when you take an airplane like this and this is called as longitudinal axis and this is a vertical axis and along the wing there is a another axis during the take off and landing the aircraft will be the motion of an aircraft is along the lateral axis more specifically the airplane is rotated in this direction and it is also it's also rotated in this direction the rotational motion this is called as it is okay adha matle okay okay when you consider an airplane this is an airplane it is rotated along this direction during the time of take off and landing and it may also rotate in this direction this is a rolling and the another direction of rotation is called as yaw all this ro uh, rotational motions and translational motions are done with the help of a control surface called as ailerons rudders and other things elevators for example when you take a flight control system in order to have a pitching motion that is rolling along this direction we use the control surface called as elevators and in order to produce a rolling motion that is there is an we use an aileron as a result the airplane rolls in this direction and coming to the rudder it plays it is used in yawing motion okay these controls devices are hinged or movable surface with which the pilot adjusts the airplane attitude during the take off flight maneuvering and landing conditions and uh, the thing is that uh, these control surfaces might be a hinge type or a movable surface types and this hinge movement and the move and this movement is done with the help of control rods or rudder pedals other things they are operated by pilot through connecting linkage and moreover there are there are different type of linkage mechanism and hydraulic mechanisms and all these things we are not going to discuss all these mechanisms the only thing is that we are considering it has a structural point of view rather rather than an operational point of view going to the next slide 
Okay, this is a single seater aircraft engine. And the main objective of this slide is to identify the components of an aircraft. Coming from the nose point, first is a propeller and next these are, we have a landing gears, total 1, 2, 3. And we have a wing structure, this is an aileron and fuselage, empennage, horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer, rudder and elevator. This rudder, elevator and ailerons, left and right ailerons are called as the sun control surface of an airplane. If the ailerons are deflected, if one wing of an aileron is deflected, as a result, there is a change in the lift force. There is a change in the lift force as a result, a rolling motion is obtained. When an elevator is deflected downwards, as a result, the lift on this elevator increases. As a result, the airplane will be rolling along the lateral axis. More specifically, this is the longitudinal axis. And this is the uh, axis along the roll. And this is axis along the pitch and this is the axis along the yaw. Yaw can be obtained by this rudder. In this slide, we have identified the main components of an aircraft. This is a simple aircraft. We have a many other type of aircraft. I am not going to go through all these things. Okay. The main important components. Of course, each and every component in an aircraft is important. Uh, let us discuss about the fuselage. The main role of a fuselage is that it is one of the major structure which carry, which, which is a body of a, an aircraft. And moreover, it provides a space for cargo, controls, accessory, passenger and other equipment. These are the roles of a fuselage. And moreover, in a single aircraft, it also houses a power plant. When you take a single uh, engine aircraft. This is an, a single engine aircraft. In this single engine aircraft, uh, this power plant is carried in the fuselage. And in multi engine aircraft, either uh, it is carried by the on the empennage or on the wings. This is only the single seater aircraft. Okay, now uh, this fuselage vary principally in size and arrangement of different compartments. And moreover, we have a different type of fuselage sections, and this size and type of fuselage depends upon the uh, aircraft which we use. For example, when you when we are using a cargo aircraft, it is intended for carrying a goods, so that we need a large space for the carrying the goods and the structure of fuselage is completely different. When you take the case of a fighter aircraft, the major role of a fighter aircraft is to uh, carry weapons and some other purpose. And the fuselage of a fighter aircraft and fuselage of a, a, a civil aircraft or cargo aircraft cannot be compared. Now coming to the fuselage types. We have a two type of uh, fuselage constructions. One is uh, stress, truss type and another is monocoque type. Uh, when you look into the truss type, these are the tubings which are welded by the each other. As a result, a rectangular or a square section is formed. And these are the diagonal web members and these are longirons and these are the vertical web members. This is one type of truss type of construction. This is generally used in a single uh, engine aircraft. And another type of construction is called as the monocoque construction. In monocoque construction, it is a skin. The major loads are carried by the bulkheads, that is these components. And there is a 
long rods which are running from one end to the other end these are the long rods and in between the bulk heads there are other stringers you can clearly visualize in this slide in this slide we have identified the elements which are used in the fuse dust construction next coming uh, already i have discussed what is uh, monocoque and str truss type construction uh, moreover this truss is a rigid framework made up of members such as beams struts and balls to resist deformation of the applied load uh, when an aerodynamic load or some other type of loads which are acting on an aircraft is resisted by this struct struct member this skin carries a direct load and it is transferred to the other elements elemental parts like uh, long rods and uh, bulkheads okay now coming to the truss type of structure strength and rigidity are obtained by joining tubing steel or aluminium to produce a series of uh, triangular shape called as truss when you look into the truss type of structure what we have is a tubing structures which are joined together by the welded joints or some other type of uh, uh, revived joints or some other uh, some other methods and as a result of this we can have a square like structure along with we also have a diagonal web member okay length of the tube called longeron are welded in place to form a wall brace frame network uh, frame sorry framework vertical and horizontal struts are welded to the longerons and gives a struck a square rectangular shape when we would from the end additional struts are needed to resist the stress that can come from the direction stringers and bulkheads and formers are added to shape the fuselage and support the covering these are the main points of this truss the thing is that it when you look into the geometry of this truss when we view in this direction it is looking like a square type or a rectangular type and these diagonal members are also added to carry the loads okay the other type of construction is called as monocoque and we have an, uh, another type of construction is called as uh, semi monocoque when you clearly look look into the monocoque structures we have bulkheads formers and this bulk apart from this we have a skin these are the three important members which are used for construction of a monocoque structure the load which is applied on this skin is carried by this bulkheads and the formers and when you take the semi monocoque like structures we have bulkheads skin formers apart from this the new thing what we observe is that these stringers these stringers are running from one bulkhead to the another bulkheads apart from the stringers we have the other components called as the longerons these are the longest beam which are running from one end of a structure of a fuse dust structure to the other end of a fuse dust structure okay as a design is progressed these structures were enclosed first with cloth and eventually with metals in early flight developments uh, these structures this skin is covered this skin is made up of some cloth or some other fabric but as the speed is increased or the uh, development has increased this that doesn't sustain as a result it is covered by some metal sheets these are great streamlined shape and increase performance as a result the there is an aerodynamic uh, shape there is a good aerodynamic shape in some cases the outer outside skin can support all the major portion of the flight loads and moreover in some part of in some cases uh, the outer skin only covers the major part of the flight loads and other Uh, loads are carried by the other members most modern aircraft use form of this stressed skin structures known as monocoque and semi monocoque structures nowadays this monocoque and semi monocoque only to the best of my knowledge only semi monocoque was used 
more than eighty uh, percent of the flight construction. Okay, coming to the monocoque. Uh, this term monocoque is a French word which means a single cell. In order to understand about this monocoque, let us uh, deviate from the subject and discuss something uh, like uh, physics. Let us consider it as a beverage can, that is, or a soda can. And this soda can can resist these end loads, but it is weak in carrying the loads in the circumferential direction. And these monocoque structures are rigid, are rigs formed and bulkheads of varying size and give shape and strength to the skin fuselage. Uh, when you take the case of monocoque structures, when you observe this, and it has a varying uh, bulk, varying size of bulkheads and the former sections. In some cases, the oxygen skin can support. Okay, sorry. Although very strong, monocoque construction is not highly tolerant to deformation of the surface. Uh, when we take the case of the monocoque structure, it is not uh, highly tolerant tolerant to the deformation surface. For example, if we take a soda can or some beverage can. Considerable forces at the end of the beam. It can support the uh, considerable forces at the end of the beam, but if the sides of the can is deformed slightly while supporting the load, it collapses. The thing is that if we take a beverage can, it can support the end loads, but it is very weak in carrying the side loads. Okay, because most twisting, because most twisting. And bending stresses are carried by the external skin rather than by the open framework. The need for internal blasting was eliminated or reduced, saving weight and maximizing the space. One of the notable and uh, innovative method for using the monocoque construction was employed by Jack Nortru. Okay. Next, coming to the uh, semi-monocoque structures. Uh, semi-monocoque construction, uh, partly or one half uses this uh, substructure to which the airplane skin is attached. Uh, this mon semi monocoque structures use a part or a semi nearly one half structures which the airplane skin is attached. The substructure, which consists of bulkheads, formers of various size and stringers, reinforces the stressed skin by taking some part of bending stress from the fuel gas. And uh, these substructures. Uh, resist the bending stress imposed by the flight loads. The main section of the fuselage also includes wing attachment points and the firewall. And the main section of the fuselage uh, include the uh, wing attachment. One single engine airplane, airplane, the engine is attached to the front of the fuselage. In the previous slides, uh, you have seen that the engine is attached to the fuselage. This is the case for the single engine aircraft. Okay, there is a fire, a fire proof partition between the rear of the engine and the flight deck or cabin to protect the pilot and the uh, passenger from accidents, accidental flight failure. Uh, in case of a flight accident, because of a, a power plant failure, the fire may exist in the power plant. In order to protect the pilots or air traffic, what we need to do is that there is a a partition between the compartment of a uh, pilot and the and the engine. This partition is called as firewall and is usually made up of heat resistant material such as stainless steel. However, a new emerging process of construction is integration of composite aircraft made easily. And this is the end of my lectures. Thank you very much. This is uh, Varun Varuganti. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.